So in the previous video I cut the complete bottom out of this cab that's lying on its back. So now it's time to do some more work and I'm just going to go through it while it's lying here and check out some of the smaller things and problem areas. Hey, how's it and welcome back. If you don't know me yet, my name's Duff from Ratros for Africa, a small one-man shop out here in the middle of the forest. <laughs> I realize rusty dream. Like this hole right here on the side of the firewall. If I leave that, I'll get wet feet. And I don't want wet feet anymore. <laughs> Done my time. So I think I better patch it. I'm going to fix my hole. Rattled style, which means I'm just going to put a little bandage over the wound. Clamp this on. And then I'm just going to stitch weld it in place. I think that can work for me. I'm happy with that. I have some pretty bad rustles right here. But I do need to create a strong point here for my cab mounts. So I've welded in this piece of 2mm thick plate. That's going to give me a nice strong point. Still a bit messy here. <laughs> yeah, so look at that, see? <laughs> Well, there's only one answer, and that's a band-aid. So the best way I can think of to clean up the rust in tight corners like this is to use one of these bits, these tungsten burrs in the die grinder. Well, since this is a budget build, I'm going to have to use this cornflakes box to make a template from. Actually, it's nothing new. I am normally a tight ass and my wife already knows. She's got to keep them for me. If I have to make a lot of templates, it means we have to eat a lot of breakfast. So I made myself a nice template to fit in here. The cornflakes bit is on the back. So it makes it a little easier if you do it in two pieces. So I first made that piece and then I cut this little piece and then I just stick them together with some masking tape. So I can now go and cut this from a piece of steel, plate, sheet. What's the difference anyway? Something to do with the thickness I think. And here it is, some one millimeter plate, 19 gauge I think or 18 gauge, can't remember now. No, that's not half bad. So I'm going to now try and tack it in place, which is going to be quite a bit of a struggle with all this rust. But let's see how far we get. Just some tacks will be good enough for me. You can see the, the rust causing a dirty weld, but it's still going to stick, I think. <laughs> now come in, my rusty problems are hidden. And now, it will only become the headache of a future generation. Yeah, I wonder about that eh, sometimes, the way the world is going now. <laughs> There's a good word you should learn if you're not from these parts. Hey, it's lekker, man. It means it's good, nice, great. If you want to spell it L-E-K-K-A. Hey, it's lekker, man. 
Remember it. Oops, another hole. So we give the band-aid? Why not? I'm on a roll now. So what was supposed to be just a little band-aid here turned into a skin transplant here. The steel in this area was so rotten that I cut it all out and installed a little patch plate in that area there and welded it up and obviously I grinded it a little bit to make it look nice. Ach no man, now I've got to do it all again on this side. What's that P word again? Persistence. Persistence is key. So keep going Duffy. If you find the view a little con bit confusing, it's because the cab is still lying on its back. So in this spot, the good old doctor will be performing a more delicate skin graft. He has already removed all the cancer and now he is busy preparing a special piece on his new toy, the shrinker. And that piece is now going to go in right here. Oops, that wasn't part of the plan. So let's rather create some assistance in the form of this piece of angle bar that's clamped on here. That will help me to line it up. I've also <laughs> tacked on the handle so I can hold it. And now I must just carefully line it up everywhere and give it a tuck for a start anyway. Okay. This old metal is very thin. I'm going to have to drop the amps on my machine a little bit. It's my little handle for maneuvering it, but it's pretty much in place now. It's not feeling too bad. I'm going to give it a little tack right there. Next one there. Last one there. Okay, now I must just weld it up. Slowly. <laughs> I do believe it's a successful skin graft. I think it's important to keep in mind that we've been using the firm skin of a 16 year old and we've attached it to a 70 year old lady. <laughs> so unless you replace all the skin, there will always be some wrinkles. And for me, the wrinkles, like this one here, we want that. It shows the character. So I've blended this in, <laughs> into that wrinkle there. And by the time it's rusted up, I don't think you will even know that this was ever grafted. In place. So with the cab still lying on its back, access to this area below the dash was easy. So I spent quite a bit of time loosening up. <laughs> Shall we call it the original aircon here? It's now working. Um, so the thing that really worked well for me is these hinge points were completely rusted and frozen and I didn't want to bulge. If you heat them up with a torch until they're red hot, they normally become loose. A little bit of oil now. And there we go. And uh, if you're not familiar with a 1950 Chevy aircon, <laughs> you see this flap here? No aircon at the moment. I pull the lever a little bit. That's half speed. 
That's full speed. Of course, this kind of aircon only works in <laughs> warm places. In winter, it will let you freeze to death. Another bad cancer spot. <laughs> yeah, on the inside of the door pillar. But I've made this plate, which will go in something like that. Well, I do believe this corner is strong now. <laughs> If you were to tell me it's not strong enough, I'm going to have to tell you that you're speaking a lie. Same here on the other side. And same solution. And here's the big picture on the left hand side. And we go across and there's the right hand side. Boy oh boy, but this corner has got some serious cancer. <laughs> so what am I going to do here? Problem is I don't have an English wheel to do this compound curvature. I don't have a sandbag. Mm. So if I take my cornflakes box and I put it on here. You can see that way. That's great. But here comes the problem now. If I go in. There's the compound scenario, a lot of shrinking would need to happen here. And stretching there. So I'm just thinking, you know what, maybe I should just give it a <coughs> like a seam there, you know, like a cut there, because yes, it's a lot of shrinking and stretching and I don't really have the right tools for it. All the skills for that matter, never done it before. I think I'm going to use this as a template to just cut my initial piece of plate. So I've got it taped on here. I got it roughly clamped in place on that side. And now when I pull this one in, wow, you can see what's happening here. So, so I'm going to just actually give it a cut right here and see what happens. Now. Things are getting a little bit better. Maybe another cut here, eh? I think now we're getting somewhere. Let me just tape this on here yeah? and then we'll see what we can do there. Well that there is not looking half bad. What is going on here now? If I release this, will it get better? That seems to be an improvement of sorts. Let me cut this a little bit more. Okay, so I'm going to pull this one over here now, like that, and it actually doesn't look too bad. Give it some tape here. There we go, it's not perfect, but it's close. I'm going to tape it all up. And now I'm just going to mark my edges, which is roughly about here. This side I'm going to cut here somewhere. A bit more masking tape. 
just to make it nice and strong. Right, I think I'm going to take it off now. Because it should basically hold its shape now. Let's see. Let me just uh, give myself a reference mark here. Always good to have a reference mark. And then for what it's worth. Right, so we should be able to take it off now. And as you can see, it's basically holding its shape now. So that is basically what I need to come up with. Piece of cake for <laughs> an accomplished coach, boulder, body worker, what do you call him? Metal man. Um, yeah, I guess if you've got all the right equipment, English wheels, power, hammers, planishing hammers and all of that. Which I don't have. So I'm going to actually try a different approach. Let's see how it's going to work out. I'm going to actually cut it here now. So then hopefully it can open up again. So let's see, I've got a line here, I'm going to cut it. Come on. And another one here. So that's kind of <laughs> what it looks like flattened out. So what I'm going to try now is I'm going to cut this out of a piece of flat steel and then pull it together until those lines meet. Weld it on those lines and then start beating the hell out of it. <laughs> and let's see if it can, what we come up with and if it works. Okay, I've got a piece of one mole sheet, one millimeter thick. And now I'm just going to trace my pattern onto the steel quickly. Yeah, and while I'm doing this, I'm actually wondering if my plan is going to work. <laughs> Only one way to find out. Here it is, I spared you the grinder noise. <laughs> that was the easy part. Right, let's come and clamp it on here. Right there. A little clamp here, excuse me. Just sitting, letting it sit on my reference marks. Clamp it this side. Okay, there we go. Now I can just bend it around like this. Okay, that was also easy. Now, <laughs> let's see what happens here now. Maybe I must start by just putting a clamp here as well. <laughs> So I've got some gaps to close up. I need to <laughs> I need to push the plate around a little bit. So I'm just fighting with it a little bit. You can see this one is actually almost there. I still got a bit of a gap this side. And I do see that I have to give it a little clearance here with the grinder as well. Same there.
this one is pretty much there, eh? I think I'll do well to give this one a little tack in a few spots to hold it in place. Right, let's start with a little tack right here. Beat it a bit more. I think that's pretty good for the next tack. I think the amps is a bit much on my machine. But anyway. Okay, so it's the tack and heat method. <laughs> So yeah, you can see here by hammering and tacking and hammering and tacking, I'm actually getting this one to close up as well now. So that's good. Okay, we've got something. Oh dear, I meant for this to be flush. And now I've got a finger thick gap here. Huh, where is that grinder? Okay, some more cutting of pie slices then I guess. My word, strange clamps everywhere. So I didn't tack this in place yet because I actually want to take it off. So that I can now go and attack it with a hammer. <laughs> well I first need to weld it up completely. So <laughs> I'm going to weld it up now and then I'm going to start beating the daylights out of it. So what do I have thus far? Some shape. It's definitely got some high spots. There's one there. There you can actually see right where the seams are. It's high. Down here it's not too bad. So I can now spend as much time as I want <laughs> on this thing with a hammer and a dolly and beat it around a little bit. Try to get it smoother. I think I will actually do a little bit of that. I found this log so I'm going to try and make myself a forming tool, if you want to call it that. It's only pine, so it's softwood, but I want to use this and see how it goes. So the idea is to hollow this out. So I'm just trying to create this hollow using a flap disc on my grinder. Let's see how it goes. Let's see. So I'm making progress, but I do think it needs to be quite a bit more. So I've never done this before, <laughs> so I have no idea if this is enough. We'll just have to go and find out. What I do know is that I am covered in dust. But I was clever, I came and did it outside. So I'm going to use my homemade hammer and my homemade stump. And I'm going to stretch some metal. And some, some shrinking from the other side using my dolly.
Let's try it, shall we? It's being held in place by these two clamps. But I don't think it's bad. Let's have a look at it from the side. Still needs to be welded in place. Well, I think we're pretty much there. So now, of course, if you could be here with me and you run your hand across this like so, you will feel that it's not perfectly smooth. I mean, I've only been working it with a hammer and I don't want to spend the rest of my life working it with a hammer. So yeah, I know the hotshot guys will now use maybe a planishing hammer or an English wheel or one of those machines or tools that I've actually never used in my life. But I think uh, we need to think about where one must draw the line. I mean, what am I building? It's just a rat rod. I'm going to let this rust. It's definitely not going to be shiny like this. Once it's rusted, you will definitely not see that it's <laughs> not perfect. When it's good enough, good enough. For me, this is more than adequate. It will suit the bolt. I'm happy with it. <laughs> Ultimately, this needs to blend into the rest of the truck, which is not perfect, which is rusted and it's got patina, so we want this to look the same, so it definitely shouldn't be perfect. <laughs> It's time to get some tacks on you. Okay, I need to get my push stick. Push stick is great now for just holding down the plate while I tack it. I think we're there. I like my stitches, what can I say? And I have one remaining hole. <laughs> so I'm just going to do another bandage and stitch it on. I'm just going to stick this piece on here. Not worry too much about it lining up or being square to anything. Something like that. And I'm just going to tack it on and job done. <laughs> so I'm tacking it every about inch and a half actually made marks so that my tacks are nice and equally spaced I guess you could say I'm OCD <laughs> I just can't seem to get away from my stitches I just love the look too much <laughs> of course it's not going to stand out so much as it is now I'm going to let it rust so that it can blend in and then it won't be so obvious. Um, yeah, I might even accelerate the last process with some swimming pool acid or, or vinegar and salt or whatever. There's many ways to do it. Well, I think I'm done with fixing holes on the cabs for now. Except for this big one in the bottom here. So I'm going to lower the cab now so I can get it ready for putting it back onto the chassis. So I can see how and what I need to do to build a floor and mounting brackets. Hey, thanks for watching my carrying ons out here in the forest. I will see you next time when I finally fit the scab in place and bolt some brackets to keep it there. Until then, have a good one.